why we need salvation. Can anybody tell me? What did we say? Without looking at your notes, though. Say how much you can remember. <laughs> well, Carl, you don't have your notes, because I've got them. Yeah. <laughs> why we need salvation. We mentioned one, two, three, four, four things. Even just, even just one. Uh, mine was, well, I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you one of them. We said that man is ill, and then we said that only a sick person needs a doctor. Can you remember any other statement that we Man is condemned. Only a, an accused man needs a lawyer. Okay. Uh, what, what did we say? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, what, what did we, how, how did we describe the, the meaning of being lost? In darkness, away from God. Yeah, okay, away, for, away from God. Okay, very good. Uh, and we talked about three lost things in the Bible. What were they? Lost coin. Lost sheep. Lost son. And the lost son. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the most important lost thing was the lost son. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we're going to talk about faith and works. Okay, faith and works. And uh, the Bible does teach us that faith cannot be separated uh, from works, okay? Uh, we need the both of them together, working together. Uh, in Titus 3 eight, this is just a kind of opening up scripture, Titus 3 eight. it says, being careful to maintain good works. Being careful to maintain good works. Now, we have to understand that in these, like in Titus and, you know, after, after the book of Acts, Romans and onwards, these are all mostly epistles and letters that were written to uh, churches, uh, individuals that were already saved, okay, that had already gone through the plan of salvation. Here Titus is saying, uh, being careful to maintain good works. Uh, which basically is, is going to happen, you know, as when, when you are converted, when you become a Christian, there will be some sort of good works uh, that will, uh, you know, that, that we will, you know, endeavor to, to do, okay? And the list is endless. What we're actually talking about here today is, we're not just talking about works, we're talking about the faith <coughs> attached to these works as well. And if you turn in your Bible to the book of James, the book of James chapter 2, James chapter 2, <coughs> I, I personally call this the faith and works chapter. James chapter 2, and verse 14. L listen to this. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Okay. Uh, again, it's very plain and simple here. Verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, it is dead being alone. Okay. On its own, it's... What does it say? Dead. It's dead. On its own, it's dead. <coughs> Yeah, man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee 
my faith by my works. That just brings it all together. Show me your faith by your works. You believe, verse 19, that there is one God, you do well. Devils also believe and they tremble. Verse 20 says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Okay? And we can also just read a wee bit further down here in verse 26. It just says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Uh, again, this is why we want to call this the faith and works chapter. Okay, it's, you know, if, if I was to make a very simple illustration, you know, uh, <clears throat> anybody ever been inside a building where the fire alarm has gone off? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah? Most people, most people do. And if you, you know, if, if you, you work in a warehouse or you, in fact, you work anywhere, most places, usually on a Thursday or a Friday, they'll have like a test run, you know, of the fire alarm gone off, set, set down, and it's basically all we do is see how quick people can, you know, find the nearest exit and get out of the building. Okay, they have them uh, quite often in Asda as well, uh, and sometimes they, they do it without, uh, I mean, they'll, they'll give you a pre-warning, they'll pre-warn you, it says, you know, we're, we're testing this, and they don't say, no action required because it's just a test, okay? But then there are some times when uh, the fire alarm, there, there's no warning, you know, there's no pre-warning. They just, the fire alarm just goes off, you know, and you're jumping out your skin, you know, and uh, everybody drops what they're doing and they get off their machinery and uh, they just start leaving to the nearest uh, exits, okay? And it's kind of like, it's kind of like that. It's, you know, that's, there's two things that you've got. But when that alarm goes, you know exactly what to do, right? You you believe in that fire alarm. You believe it's there for a purpose, and you act upon that. But if I was to, you know, just say that fire alarm went off and I just, ah, you know, everybody else is leaving. I'll just stay in the building. Uh, it's nothing to write home about, you know. It's you know they're just you know doing it to see how quick they can get us out of the building. Uh, and if I just stay in the building, uh, that's you know okay. I believe in the, I believe in the fire alarm, but I'm not acting on it. Uh, and on top of that, it's that could be a sackable offence as well. Yeah. You know, just staying in the building when the fire alarm is gone. Uh, so that's it's kind of like faith without works is dead. Yeah. But uh, when the fire alarm goes, everybody knows it's automatically. They believe in it, they know what it's all about, they know what's expected of them, and they, they exit uh, out, out of the building. Okay? That's two things, it's faith and it works. And that's what is required of us all throughout our Christian life. Okay? Uh, faith and works. Not, not faith and not works, not works and no faith, but the two of them working together in harmony. Uh, I mean, we could use all different kinds of illustrations to bring uh, this out. Uh, but in actually reading the book of James, now, some have actually, you know, said or maybe even taught that there's a wee bit of a contradiction uh, in Paul's teaching about faith. And then when you actually compare it to the teaching of James, right, because... Paul teaches more about faith. James teaches more about works. Well, that's how it kind of comes across. One emphasizes one more than, than the other. It's, it's just how it is. There is no contradiction there whatsoever. Uh, but when we look at James, James balances both, uh, you know, faith and works. That's why he says, you know, the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. He, he balances the, the two of them out. And uh, Martin Luther, this is maybe, this will probably be in your notes here, we, not there, Martin Luther, uh, disliked the book of James 
did not believe that the book of James should actually be in the Bible at all. Mm. Mm, how interesting is that? Uh, and it wasn't just the fact that he thought that it shouldn't be in the Bible. He actually disliked it. You know, I don't like this book. <laughs> this book shouldn't be in the Bible. <laughs> okay. And uh, because he, he questioned its place in the Bible because he thought that it contradicted justification by faith. He thought it contradicted justification by faith. That we are made righteous by faith. Okay? But you, you, it's like we said la last month. You, you've got to look at the whole, whole picture. You've got to look at the whole, the whole program here. You know, look at the text, look at the context, look at the greater context. Look at the whole chapter and see what's, see what's coming out of the whole chapter. In James and also, uh, you know, in, in uh, you know, Paul's writings as well, you'll find that to be the case. Uh, Paul's epistle and James' epistle are equally part of the Word of God. We do know that God's Word does not contradict itself. Uh, the writings of Paul and James, they complement each other, right? They complement each other. Uh, they fit together in a harmonious whole. Uh, the thing that we see right here, right? Paul emphasized that we are saved by faith in Jesus, okay? And not by our works. And he's exactly correct. He's, he's, he's com completely correct. Uh, and not by our works. Uh, so then we've got to, because works alone don't save. Okay? Works alone don't save. And uh, we, we remember that God has purchased salvation for us, and we accept that by faith. And then we act upon that faith. Okay? By our works. Uh, and these works are okay. I, I believe you, Lord. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to be water baptized in His name, and I'm going to receive the Holy Spirit by faith. The, the thing that we cannot do, that we can never ever do, is purchase. Uh, we cannot purchase salvation by our good works. <coughs> I'm sure you would agree with me with that one. Hmm? You can't purchase salvation with your good works. Even though uh, there may be many different kinds of good works <coughs> demonstrated within Christianity, uh, in James 1.17, uh, the Bible says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Uh, every good gift that comes from above. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, uh, you know, when it talks about uh, the, the, the day of Pentecost arriving, it says there was sound out of heaven, right, as of a rushing mighty wind. Where did it come from? It came from heaven. And it came from above. Salvation comes from above. Okay. Salvation comes from above. We live in a, a, a time, of course what I'm saying we live in a time, but it's, it's been the case ever since uh, the, the serpent beguiled Eve, uh, where uh, Satan uh, has manipulated uh, you know, all the way through humanity, uh, devised a way in, in which you know, he can get individuals believing that, hey, salvation is in you. Salvation is in you, you know. You, all you need to do is believe in yourself. You know, uh, you, you can find God inside yourself. Uh, and this is, this is not the, the biblical view uh, of receiving salvation. Uh, this, is, this comes from Eastern mysticism. Okay, this comes from Eastern mysticism. Uh, which you'll probably discover in analysis of religions, uh, but it's you know a lot of diff a lot of these uh, groups believe uh, in that uh, that you know you make up 
your own salvation, you know. You, you can make it to heaven by pulling up your own bootstraps. You know, you can do it, you know, uh, by yourself, you know, without the aid of any outside deity, okay? And the reason to say that is because you're a God, okay? You're a God. Uh, but this is not the, the proper <coughs> way, this is, this is certainly not biblical. Uh, so, this, this kind of faith will produce works. Faith is seen through the response that we make. If you'll turn in your Bible to the book of Genesis, uh, chapter uh, 15, Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 6. Uh, verse 6. Yeah. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Uh, sake. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, he, he was justified. Okay. He was justified. Uh, and again, and if we just can I quickly go over into the New Testament to the book of Romans, chapter 4. Romans, chapter 4, and verse 1 to uh, 3. Romans, chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Uh, Carl? What shall we say that? What shall we say then that Abraham Father as pertaining to the life of time? For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not for God. For what says the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Okay. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned unto praise, but of death. Okay. And verse 3 again it says, what says the script? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. In other words, it says he was, he was justified uh, through his uh, faith, through his actions. Abraham, without works, his faith would have been absolutely dead. You know, it would, you know, it would, it would not mean anything. Abraham would not mean anything. And what Abraham achieved would not mean anything. In fact, Abraham probably would not be in the Hall of Fame had it not been for both his faith and his works together. You know, what if he had said, oh well, you know, I do believe in God, but there is absolutely no way I'm giving up Isaac. There is no way I'm giving up Isaac. And, you know, many an individual has done the very same thing, you know. You know, we, we can easily do that. Well, according to James, he would not have had what's called true faith. Therefore, he would not have been justified, because that's how Abram was ju justified. Abram was justified uh, by Abram was justified through his through his faith and his works. Okay, and uh, so faith without works is dead. Now you can read the whole story in Genesis 22. We'll just very quickly recap uh, the scenario between Abraham, God, and Isaac. A very familiar uh, piece. Uh, God himself, you know, commanded Abraham uh, to offer up Isaac. The whole story there. And uh, God tells him, you know, concerning... You know, so I want you to offer up your son. I want you to go to such and such a place. And we know about the three-day journey that he took to get there. And, uh, you know, on, the, the, on the, the day that he was to sacrifice his son, you know, he, 
he, everything's ready, you know, he, he gets the he gets the wood and he gets the fire and you know and Isaac's saying, Okay, okay, we've got the wood, we've got the fire, but where's the sacrifice? And uh, God just simply replies, God himself will provide himself a sacrifice. And uh, Isaac has he, he is bound, that knife is just about getting ready to come down on his own son and the angel uh, of the Lord just quickly comes to his aid and speaks out it says lay not your hand upon the Lord for now I know that you fear the Lord now I know that you fear the Lord this was a test of Abraham's faith and uh, I mean I mean he, he he just he beat it hands down you know he, he beat it hands down but you see the combination of faith and works uh, right here. And because, and because he did this, God said to him, he says, I will bless you because you've obeyed my voice. Because you've obeyed my voice, I will bless you. Now if he, if he had not offered up Isaac, it lets us know that he would not have been blessed. You know, you know this, you know this, uh, this, this blessing that Abraham received. You know, the, the, the father of many nations. You know, as far as the eye could see. You know, uh, he would not have that. Okay, he would not have that. But because he had faith, and he offered up. You know, he was willing to offer up. I will bless you. And Jesus declared in one place, it says, if you love me, you'll obey me. Okay? If you love me, you'll obey me. In summary right here, both Paul and James use the same terms in a somewhat different way uh, in their context. Uh, for example, in the book of Romans, justification uh, is declared righteous by God. But in the book of James, it uses the word shown to be righteous. Shown to be righteous. There is a wee page. Uh, you can actually read this in uh, the New Birth by David Bernard. On page uh, 49. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing here. But uh, David Bernard gives a little piece from Vine's uh, commentary. Uh, on this harmony between uh, faith and works. But uh, it's just to let you know it's in page 49. And this is evident that Paul and James both agreed that saving faith will produce a life changing reliance upon God, which is evidenced by our works. It is evidenced by our works. Again, in the book of Hebrews, what did we say that the book of Hebrews is called? <coughs> book of Hebrews is called? It's the book of faith. The book of faith, of the, yeah. of the hall of, of fame, the, you know, the faith chapter. Uh, and it shows us the illustration or the relationship between faith and works. Uh, it shows us how necessary faith is and what that faith will produce. And it gives us so many different names, you know, in the book of Hebrews. I mean, without looking at Hebrews chapter 11, what names just come to your mind? What, what names just come to your mind in Hebrews chapter 11? <coughs> what we call the heroes of faith. What names come to your mind? Oh, come on. Abraham. Well, we just, we just mentioned, okay, Abraham. Moses. Moses. Isaac. Isaac. Yeah, now, now we're cooking. Jacob. Jacob. Joshua. Joshua. Noah. Noah. David. David. Okay, we're getting there. Just on and on and on. Uh, say that again? I can't, I can't quite hear you there. Did you say Noah? Joel. 
Job. 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 Uh, Job, I don't know if he's actually in Hebrews 11, but Job did have, uh, Job did have a very faith, lot yeah. of faith. <laughs> he had a lot of faith. Yeah, a lot of faith. I'm not... Anyway, uh, so faith will always produce works that will be shown by, by you know, what we do. Every time the writer describes someone's faith, he listed those actions faith uh, caused. Okay? Well, we didn't mention Jacob. We mentioned all of these the different ones. Uh, for example, turn uh, with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Just as, a, as an example, as an example, uh, I mean, you could take any one of them right here, verse, verse 4 of chapter 11. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Okay? By which he obtained witness that he was righteous by God testifying of his gifts, and by he being dead, ye speak. So, we say faith, the faith in Abel, but we also see what he did, you know? We also see what he did. Again, you could pick verse 31, for example, by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies. Her faith uh, contributed, because of her faith, she hid the spies. You know, that was her actions. That was her actions. Uh, in verse uh, 32, it says, and I like this little piece here because it says what shall, shall I more say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David was mentioned, also Samuel the prophets. It says who through faith and then it tells you what they did. They subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others been tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others had trials of cruel mocking sturgeons, yea, more over of bonds than imprisonments, talks about stonings and all these different wandering in the, the deserts and mountains, dens and caves, you know, running for their lives constantly. Uh, and these all have an, obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Uh, it's a very interesting piece in regard to faith and the action that their faith uh, brought about. So, remember we are saved, we are saved by grace through faith. Uh, we rely on God's work. It's not, it's not our good works, it's not the work that we do. It's not even the, the work of repentance or the work of baptism. Uh, or the work of faith, or the, the work of receiving the Holy Spirit, any of these things, okay, it is a complete reliance on God's work and not our own to bring about salvation. Uh, however, this does not relieve us of our responsibility to respond to God, okay, and uh, you know, faith requires a response. And we see this very, very clear throughout the Old and New Testament, the response being in regards to salvation, uh, you know, one must uh, believe, one must repent, one must be baptized, one must receive the Holy Spirit, and then one must uh, walk uh, by faith <coughs> in the Lord. In other words, we act upon that faith, uh, not just in regards to salvation, all throughout our Christian walk. So saving faith is a living faith that works. There's uh, another, uh, in page 50, 
Uh, I'm not going to talk about this, but on page 50, uh, for further reading, and uh, you'll come across this anyway uh, as you continue your, your reading on the new birth. Uh, but David Bernard uh, talks about something quite interesting here. He talks about continuing faith. Uh, in other words, continuing faith is just a continuing relationship with Christ. That's continuing faith. If you continue with Christ, you have continuing faith. Uh, he talks about the object of faith, object being Christ, because Christ is central. And then he talks about faith and repentance working together. He talks about faith and water baptism, and he talks about faith and the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, this is what we have to understand, that, you know, with, without faith, you wouldn't repent. Without faith, you, you wouldn't actually be water baptized. Without faith, you wouldn't receive the Holy Spirit. And without faith, you certainly would not uh, have a relationship with, with God. As I said before, the fact that you're here today, uh, the fact that you show up in church services, however many times you are there, is an indication of your faith and uh, your works. You know, towards God. Okay. Uh, if that was not the case, if, uh, you know, if you if you if you weren't here, if, if you weren't in church, if you weren't doing the things you know that, that we normally do, uh, it would be something to do with your faith. Okay. Can you go here? Okay. Uh, let's just move on just a wee bit here. Just a couple of these things. Forgiveness and remission are basically two different events. You know, they're, they're distinct from each other. They they look the same, but they are completely different. Uh, can anybody, or does anybody think they can tell me what the difference is? What is actually we not in your between remission and yeah, uh -huh. faith? Uh, what the difference is between uh, forgiveness of sins and remissions. Is there, is there a difference? Can you see the difference? Remission, remission is more to do with you repenting. Or is it the other? I don't think that that was for the remission of sins. <coughs> well, what, is, what is the Bible saying? Hebrews 9.22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins, which has to do with what baptism. Okay? So uh, that's, that's the difference. Remission has to do with what baptism. Our sins are only remitted at baptism. That's when they're washed, remitted, removed. Uh, where does forgiveness happen? Don't you think yourself? Within yourself. <laughs> Where does forgiveness happen? Where does forgiveness happen? When we repent. When we repent. <laughs> okay. And that's that's basically the you know the difference between the two of them. Uh, at repentance, we could say that God accepts our apology and restores us into a personal relationship.